Well, it is always nice to be here and see everybody, even though the light is so bright I really can't see any faces, but I see imagery and that's what counts. Uh, I had forgotten that this was uh, going into uh, the celebration of Veterans Day, and I had a couple of pieces that were very personal to me, and uh, I wanted to share them with you. The first one was, I was actually down south, and it's entitled A Feeling of War. I think not of myself as a political person, but care I do for my fellow human beings. I remember as a child seeing P-51 fighter planes dogfighting over where we lived in Tennessee and wondered what it would be like to fly and play in the sky. World War II had come and gone, and the Korean War was around the corner, then it would be Vietnam, and then Iraq. Bits and pieces of way back then come to mind, but I was somewhere else. Any images I might have had were mere mirages of a place I could not fathom. War has always killed, destroyed families, and maimed those who survived in monstrous ways. We continue down this path, sacrificing our young, bringing the horror of loss to families who justly deserve better. Those who serve are worthy of the highest order, we can muster. Those who send and plan need to reconsider their ongoing venues of destruction. Greed and power have long been those moments of cause, and our path this day is a sought-after trek into a very bleak future. What war lies ahead, and when in the future will our sons and daughters and grandchildren of today at three and five years be sent to their deaths. I am not alone in recognizing this plight of ours for what it is, for what it could become. We live a chaotic existence in this world that spurs ignorance and isolationism, of which I am part of. Peace is more difficult to achieve than war, but the rewards of neighboring humanity's cultures are worth the struggle. Isolationism is not an answer. Let us reach out and step abroad to see the goodness of unknown shores inhabited by those who mirror our good intentions. The irony is fighting and dying for peace. There is a better way. If we don't look, we will never find. This next piece is one uh, I wrote in regard to my brother who was actually in Vietnam. And uh, what I'm going to read you, I think you'll understand why uh, only until the last six months have we ever talked about this. It's entitled Years Past But Not Forgotten. Vietnam, those war years of not so long ago, but of sad yesterdays for many, bring back to me those isolated images of where I was, self-reflecting selfishness in my world of art that summer. My young brother Banks overseas, facing survival every day, leading his platoon into potential dark days of death. A college graduate with ROTC earnings of second lieutenant, into the military he went, survival training in Central America's steaming jungles, learning to eat woodworms to stay alive, then off to hell. Send cupcakes over, we would, realizing, though we did, the triviality of such an action, but wanting so to bring a second or two of back home thoughts to those heroes in peril. A call from my dad one day came. My brother's platoon, most of whom had been blown into bone and gut pieces by landmines to hell with collateral damage. 
Banks and two others survived, but with shrapnel severe injuries. Homeward bound they were. Of what happened I have never asked, nor has he ever said of those 45 years past. World violence this day, a constant reminder of that past, those deaths, those injuries, both physical and mental, and the true questioned horror of where we are today headed. Political power and money prevail still over human lives. Having learned little of the beauty of cultural differences and the coming together of humanity to forge ahead and save this our world. The hideousness of hate, the hopeful longevity of love. War is not the answer, but the end. Thank you. This is actually something that uh, I had written before I did the, uh, the two pieces that I did for Halloween, and they were kind of horrific. And I came across this just the other day and was reminded, oh my God, this was kind of the first piece that was kind of similar but different to those two pieces. And it's entitled, What a Night. Walking down the dreary side of this street, I feel my toes swishing in the late afternoon heat. Wherefore am I going this dark, humid, cloud-driven day? Is it possible for me to find a rambunctious sway? No movement around me do I see, but then something grabs my eye at the top of said tree. It cannot be real this day and time. I then rush the trunk and begin to climb. The profile is there as I up the tree, and then her voluptuous body is so balanced there before me. Naked movements are there, but at this angle I cannot see her face to share. This unreality of desire has to be a sleeping dream meant only for me. As I reach up to caress her smooth, dangling extensions, my clothes are gone. Did I fail to mention? Bright lights seem to flicker all around as we flow together down to the ground. A sexual sway for me has come this day. I so want this time and place to stay. Under her flesh, large throbbing motions start there is no way this can be her true heart. She is getting larger on top of me, or am I melting down as the secondary he? Wake up, suddenly I do, realizing immediately there is no you. I hear a sound and turn around, but what I think to want and see is you coming forward toward the lonely me. Body beautiful is still there to see, her face and lips with a soothing, soft grin, so reminds me I am not that thin. As she starts to stroke my body's meat, there is only arousal from my head to my feet. The gracious feel, good reality to this waking dream, was having luscious sex ending with my orgasmic scream. Thank you.